to Quranic insight we gain wisdom slide to Quranic insight we gain wisdom slide illuminating our path to what is right illuminating our path to what is right Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wal Mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Rasulullah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah As salatu wa salamu alayka ya Nabi Allah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nur Allah As salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh once again, welcome to the program of Madani channel, Quranic Insights. In the previous episode, we explored the excellence and significance of the Holy Kaaba, its attributes, its construction, and the supplication made by Sayyidina Ibrahim salam after its completion. We also discussed the importance and benefits of supplication the reasons why some supplications may go unanswered and the conditions and manners for making supplication. Additionally, we highlighted the virtues of Surah Al-Baqarah. In today's episode, we will discuss a topic from the third chapter of the Holy Quran, Surah Ali Imran, focusing on the favorite religion of Allah Almighty. We will explore which religion is beloved and accepted in the court of Allah Almighty. The excellence of Islam. Why Islam is superior to every other religion and many other things. But before we discuss this topic, we will present an introduction to Surah Ali Imran and its key topics. Let's begin our episode with the excellence of Durood. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam said, The person who recites 50 durood upon me in a day, I will shake hands with him on Judgment Day. Sallu alal Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Dear viewers, in terms of sequence, Surah Ali Imran is the third chapter of the Holy Quran. While in the order of revelation, it is the 89th. This chapter was revealed in Medina and consists of 20 rukus and 200 verses. One meaning of al is offspring. And from verse 33 to verse 54 of this chapter, the life and virtues of the offspring of Sayyidatuna Maryam's father Imran are mentioned. Because of this, the chapter was named Surah Ali Imran. The central topic of this chapter includes the birth and upbringing of Sayyidatuna Maryam radiallahu ta'ala anha. Sayyidina Zakariya alayhi salam supplication while standing in the place where Sayyidatuna Maryam radiallahu anha received sustenance from the court of Allah Almighty and the glad tidings of the birth of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam given to Sayyidatuna Maryam radiallahu anha. It also covers the prophetic miracles and incidents related to Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. Additionally, the chapter discusses several other important subjects which we will explore further. For example, Islam is the only religion accepted in the court of Allah Almighty. This chapter outlines the shari rulings regarding the prohibition of usury and the consequences for those who fail to pay zakah. It also emphasizes the virtues of spending wealth for the well-being of the ummah, the importance of doing good to others and the dangers of stinginess. Dear viewers, Allah Almighty has declared Islam as the beloved and accepted religion in His court. In Surah Ali Imran, Allah Almighty proclaims in verse 19, 
الدین اللہ الاسلام ٹرانسلیشن فرام کنز العرفان ان دی دا اونلی ایکسپٹیبل ریلیجن بیفور اللہ از اسلام اللہ آمائی سینٹ ویریس پروفٹس علیہ السلام ٹو گائڈ اینڈ ریفارم پیپل ون ایور فالس ریلیجنس بیگین ٹو اسپریڈ اللہ آمائی سینٹ ہز چوزن بانز مین ٹو کال پیپل بیک ٹو ہم اینڈ وائٹ دم ٹو ہز بلوڈ ریلیجن اسلام اللہ آمائی از دا کریٹر اونر اینڈ سسٹینر آف ایوری ون ریگارڈ لیس آف دا ریلیجن ہی از دا ون ہو کریٹس provide sustenance and grants life and its necessities. This is the divine system of the universe. However, Allah Almighty did not create people merely to eat, drink, and fulfill desires like animals. He Almighty established a specific purpose for their lives. To ensure that people were not left without guidance, Allah Almighty sent Prophets السلام, to show them the best way to live a meaningful life, fulfill their purpose, and succeed. This guidance was perfected with the final Prophet, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam. In this era, salvation lies in following the religion he brought. And the only authentic religion accepted in the court of Allah Almighty is Islam, as mentioned in the earlier verse. Dear viewers, Islam is a perfect religion, and Allah Almighty has chosen it with great favor for His bondsmen. As Allah Almighty declares in verse 3 of Surah Al-Ma'idah, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَدِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ Translation from Kanzul Irfan This day I have perfected your religion for you and completed my favor upon you and chosen Islam for you as a religion. It is a tremendous blessing from Allah Almighty that He has granted us Islam, a religion superior to all others. And why wouldn't it be? This is the religion brought to us by the beloved Prophet of Allah Almighty. It is essential for us to wholeheartedly embrace Islam, adhere to its teachings at every step of our lives, and follow the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in all of our actions. As Allah Almighty has clearly proclaimed in verse 7 of Surah Al-Hashr, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Translation from Kanzul Irfan, whatever the messenger grants you, take it, and whatever he forbids, refrain from it. Therefore, it is essential to have faith in the religion brought to us by the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. It is obligatory for each of us to follow his commands and avoid what he has prohibited. By adhering to these teachings, we can lead a truly successful life, achieve our life's purpose, and attain success in the court of the Almighty. Dear viewers, One of the greatest virtues of Islam is that Allah Almighty has declared it His beloved religion. This excellence is highlighted in many blessed ahadith. Let's hear one of these ahadith to clearly understand the superior status of Islam much like a bright, clear day. Sayyiduna Ibn Shimasa radiallahu anhu states, We visited Sayyiduna Amr Ibn As radiallahu anhu when he was in the agonies of death. He radiallahu anhu wept for a long time and then said when Allah Almighty instilled the love of Islam in my heart, I went to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, stretch out your right hand so that I may pledge allegiance to you. When he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stretched out his blessed hand, I withdrew my hand. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked, O oh, Amr, what's the matter? I replied, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I wish to embrace Islam, but on one condition. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inquired, What condition do you have? I answered, My condition is that I should be forgiven. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said, O oh, Amr, 
Don't you know that embracing Islam wipes away previous sins? Migration removes previous sins and Hajj also removes previous sins. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers, indeed, through the grace of Islam, all past sins are erased. This blessed religion amplifies the rewards of even small deeds. It is through Islam that our ummah was gifted with a night where worship is more rewarding than a thousand years. Only the followers of this religion will find success in the court of Allah Almighty. May Allah Almighty grant us all steadfastness in Islam until our last breath. Ameen bijahin nabil ameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers, Islam is a universal and global religion that goes beyond just a set of beliefs and obligatory practices. Its teachings encompass every aspect of a person's life, offering guidance that beautifully addresses social, financial, domestic, and personal matters. Islam provides clear guidance on how to live in every situation, from collective and individual life to personal and marital matters. Through the blessed ahadith, the Holy Prophet ﷺ imparted this wisdom to his companions and the entire world, showing us how to live our lives. Allah Almighty highlights this comprehensive guidance in the Holy Quran, stating in verse 21 of Surah Al Ahzab, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Translation from Kanzul Irfan, certainly in the Messenger of Allah, you have an exceptional example. Dear viewers, Islam is the only true way of life, offering the path to salvation and success for all of humanity. With its unmatched beauty, attributes, and comprehensiveness and teachings, Islam stands superior to all other religions and ideologies. Let's explore the virtues and attributes that elevate Islam above all others. Islam is the cherished and timeless religion of Allah Almighty. From Sayyiduna Adam alayhi salam to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, every prophet illuminated the world with the light of this sacred faith during their time. Allah Almighty perfected this religion through his final prophet, Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam. Therefore, while the essence of every prophet's message was Islam, today Islam refers specifically to the religion brought by the final prophet, Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam. Dear viewers, Islam is not limited to any specific family, tribe, country, or language. It was sent for all of humanity. In contrast, all prophets before Islam were sent to specific regions or nations as mentioned in various places in the Holy Quran. The Almighty proclaims in verse 25 of Surah Hud, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ Translation from Kanzul Irfan, we certainly sent Nuh to his nation. Similarly, it is declared in another verse, verse 61 of Surah Hud, وَإِلَىٰ ثَمُودَ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا Translation from Kanzul Irfan, and to Thamud, we sent their brother in nation, Salih. The Holy Prophet ﷺ explained that Islam was sent for all of humanity and said every prophet was sent specifically to his nation, but I have been sent to all of humanity. Islam is unique that it offers guidance for all humankind. Its teachings provide timeless wisdom that addresses the needs and challenges of every era guiding people until judgment day. Islam is a religion that eliminates 
racial differences and promotes equality. Its teachings are free from racial discrimination. Islam strongly discourages hatred or enmity based on race or tribe. In Islam, all people are subject to the same laws and it is only one's good actions that determine his status in the court of Allah Almighty. As He Almighty proclaims in verse 13 of Surah Hujurat, Inna akramakum indallahi atqaakum Translation from Kanzul Irfan, Indeed the most honorable of you in the court of Allah is the most pious one among you. A distinctive attribute of Islam is its religious tolerance. Islam is a religion of forgiveness, mercy and kindness. Its beauty and effectiveness lie in its emphasis on justice, compassion, and exemplary manners. These qualities have drawn many to embrace Islam. Islam teaches that justice should be upheld even towards opponents and enemies. As Allah Almighty proclaimed in verse 2 of Surah Al-Ma'idah, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ أَنْ صَدُّوكُمْ عَنِ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ أَنْ تَعْتَدُوا Translation from Kanzul Irfan and the enmity of a tribe who prevented you from entering the sacred house, Al-Masjid Al-Haram, should not incite you to transgress. Islam does not compel non-Muslims to convert. Allah Almighty proclaims in verse 256 of Surah Al-Baqarah, لا إكراه في الدين Translation from Kanzul Irfan, there is no coercion in religion. Islam places a strong emphasis on ease and convenience for its followers. It does not impose burdens on people beyond their capacity. Allah Almighty proclaims in verse 185 of Surah Al-Baqarah, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Translation from Kanzul Irfan, Allah only intends ease for you and He does not intend difficulty for you. In another place, it is proclaimed, verse 286 of Surah Al-Baqarah, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Translation from Kanzul Irfan, Allah only burdens a life according to its capability. Dear viewers, this is the immense favor of Allah Almighty who has blessed us with the magnificent religion of Islam. He has granted us faith that surpasses all others. He has blessed us with a religion that embodies ease and convenience. We have been given the perfect way of life and an enduring blessing. Therefore, we should diligently follow the commandments of this religion live according to its principles and always be mindful of preserving this great bounty. Scholars state a person who does not fear losing his faith might face the risk of having his faith taken away at the time of death. Dear viewers, there are certain words and actions that can destroy a person's faith, causing them to leave the fold of Islam. Now let's explore the reasons that can lead to the loss of faith. According to some scholars, there are four main causes of an evil end. Number one, neglecting salah. Number two, consuming alcohol. Number three, disobeying parents. And number four, causing harm to fellow Muslims. Dear viewers, if anyone among us neglects salah, delays it beyond its prescribed time, fails to wake up for fajr salah due to negligence, or chooses to pray at home instead of joining the congregation in the masjid without a valid shari excuse, he should reflect on his actions and fear that this laziness might lead to an evil end. Similarly, those who consume alcohol, disobey Allah Almighty or harm fellow Muslims through words or actions should repent for their sins and if necessary, make amends for them. For example, if someone 
has neglected his prayer. He should not only repent, but also make up for the missed prayers. Likewise, if anyone wronged his parents, siblings, spouse, or friends, he should sincerely apologize in a way that leads to forgiveness. Dear viewers, if we find ourselves engaged in a sin that could endanger our faith, we should seriously reflect on our hereafter. Repent immediately and fear the possibility of an evil end. Even though our pious predecessors were virtuous, they were so concerned about an evil end that they would spend entire nights weeping in fear. Hence, Sayyidina Yusuf ibn Asbat rahmatullahi alayhi states, Once I visited Sayyidina Sufyan Thawri rahmatullahi alayhi, and he wept throughout the night. I asked, Are you weeping out of fear for your sins? He picked up a straw and said, in the court of Allah Almighty, a sin is even smaller than this straw. What I fear is that my faith might be taken away from me. Allahu Akbar. Dear viewers, we should always be mindful of the hidden plan of Allah Almighty and strive to perform actions that lead to a good end. Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi alayhi, while explaining how to prevent an evil end states, if you want to be safeguarded from an evil end, spend your life in complete obedience to Allah Almighty and avoid every sin. Maintain the same level of fear and awareness as the pious predecessors, which leads to prolonged weeping and a constant state of sadness. He further states, stay focused on preparing for a good end by consistently engaging in the remembrance of Allah Almighty. Remove the love of this world from your heart and protect both your body and heart from sins. As much as possible, avoid the company of evil people as their influence can lead your heart and mind astray. Dear viewers, for a good end, we should consistently engage in the remembrance of Allah Almighty. Strive to free ourselves from the love of this world and avoid the company and even the sight of evil people. May Allah Almighty protect us all from an evil end. Enable us to live our lives with Islam and grant us the blessing of leaving this world with our faith intact amin bijahin nabil amin sallallahu alayhi wasallam dear viewers in today's episode we explored the beloved religion of allah almighty highlighting the excellence and superiority of islam in various aspects we also discussed the reasons behind the loss of the bounty of islam and ways to prevent an evil end may allah almighty accept our endeavors Insha'Allah, we will be back in the next episode with a new topic. Keep watching Madani Channel. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Through Quranic insight, we gain wisdom's light. Through Quranic insight, we gain wisdom's light. Illuminating our path to what is right. Illuminating our path to what is right. 